being available in many formulations and generally considered as very safe, paracetamol is being used even by the riskiest populations, such as children and pregnant women. Is paracetamol really that safe? And are there any individual differences between us when it comes to its safety? As recommended by the manufacturer, the maximum daily dose of paracetamol for a healthy adult is 4,000 mg, or 8 tablets of 500 mg. Accidental overdose with paracetamol is actually quite frequent, mostly due to its simultaneous use with other products that also contain this drug. At the moment, more than 100 over-the-counter products contain paracetamol in different amounts. Exceeding the recommended dose is dangerous because of a toxic meat product of paracetamol that results from its degradation in the liver and that damages liver cells. In the US and Europe, the principal reason for acute liver failure is exactly paracetamol. Mild, incipient symptoms of toxicity, nausea and vomiting that appear in the first 24 hours must never fool the patient because most frequently they are just the beginning of a serious clinical presentation of a gradual liver function impairment. These symptoms include stomach pain, elevation in liver enzymes and bilirubin, coagulation disorders, blood glucose decrease, and impaired consciousness. With the appropriate treatment applied within the first 96 hours, the symptoms may cease. Nonetheless, in some patients, despite adequate treatment, the condition will progress to multiple organ failure and death. So, can we be sure that we are safe if we never exceed the recommended dose of 4,000 mg a day? Unfortunately, there is no consensus between scientists on this matter. While some clinical studies suggest that even taking more than 6,000 mg a day over a three-day period could be safe, others confirm that toxicity is possible even with doses lower than 4,000 mg a day. How is this possible? Well, the probability of a paracetamol-induced liver damage and its severity can be estimated by measuring paracetamol blood levels when the patient arrives at the hospital. However, even though these levels are most important for such prediction, other individual factors are also important for this matter. These factors include patient's age, genetic factors, patient's nutrition status and alcohol use, as well as the use of other drugs or supplements.